All right, guys, so today we are going to be reviewing the Malno AU PM 320S condenser microphone. So let's get into the video. All right, guys, Neil from Neil Collins Recording. Welcome to my channel if you're new. Welcome back to my channel if you're not. Either way, appreciate you watching this video. So the good people at Malno have sent me this microphone for me to review for you guys. It's the AU PM 320S. So it's a condenser microphone, XLR, so you will need an audio interface that supplies 48 volt phantom power. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna jump on Amazon and have a look at the product page. And I'm just gonna show you what you get in the box because you get quite a lot for your money that's for sure so let's just have a look on amazon so get a double-sided pop shield which is nice there's the microphone itself get the shock mount the xlr cable and a cover for the microphone all that for around 65 pounds 65 us dollars equivalent it's roughly the same i believe in the us it's a cardioid microphone so it's picking up audio from the front and rejecting audio from everywhere else not sure what this guy's doing that's an odd singing face but as you can see it's picking up audio from the front this pop shield is to get rid of plosives so in this picture is pretty much where you should have the pop shield about that far from the microphone and it will stop all the p -p -p plosives so there's the amazon page i'll link to it in the description as you can see as i said earlier on you're going to need an audio interface so your condenser microphone will plug into your audio interface via the xlr cable and then your audio interface will connect to your computer, usually via USB, but it can be different cable configurations. But that's what you're gonna to need to run this microphone. Without the audio interface, you won't be able to power the microphone or your computer won't be able to receive the signal. The audio interface will also need phantom power, 48 volt, to power the microphone, which most audio interfaces do have anyway. So let's open the box just before we do that. Let's see if we've missed anything. It's got a frequency response 20 to 18,000 hertz. So that's pretty good. It has got a bit of a roll off at the top. It doesn't go all the way to 20,000, but 18,000, that's absolutely fine, especially for vocals. Okay, so let's open the box, have a look inside. Okay, so we get the user manual, standard. Get a little business card, that's nice, personal touch. Here's the microphone cover, if it's windy. Again, this stops plosives, same as the pop shield. So here is the pop shield. Like I said before, it's double lined, so it's got two material on the front and the back. So it should really cut down the plosives quite nicely, okay? So this is quite nicely made. Some of these, especially these bits, can be a bit naff to say the least, but this seems quite sturdy. So, so far so good. Pop shield, take out this. And then we've got all this good stuff underneath. So, here's the XLR cable, two and a half meters, I think it said, which is quite short. Uh, I'd have liked to have seen the XLR cable a bit longer. Two and a half meters isn't very long, really, but it, it does feel quite nice. Some of these cables feel a bit stiff, but this feels quite nice, so. That's all good. It's long enough, but it's always nice to have it a little bit longer than it needs to be. Here's the actual microphone itself. So let's take that out. It's quite a nice size. It's all metallic. It's a really nice weight to it, which is a good thing with a microphone. Um, yeah, it looks quite smart. Nice first impressions on that one. I'll just give you a, a better look. So it's a good size, not too big, not too small. Like I said, it's got a nice weight to it, so that's all good. Here's the shock mount. The way you put these microphones in is they've got these little pinch bits on the shock mount. So the shock mounts have got these little pinch bits on, so that's how you open it to put the mic inside. Okay, so that's all nice and sturdy. So remember when you put the microphone in, you're gonna want the Malno name to be facing you, that's the front of the microphone. So we've got the clamp, and we have got the little boom arm. Now, first impressions, I thought the boom arm was gonna be bigger and weightier, but 
that's not a bad thing. Um, it doesn't have to be huge and it feels quite nice and sturdy. Um, it's all metal, so there's no plastic bits on it apart from this little plastic screw at this end. And it's just got like a, a standard sort of clamp that you clamp to the desk. This just clamps to the desk like so. nice and sturdy okay and then we grab the other bit of the boom and the boom slots in little screw boom clips into that and that just does up okay as you can see that's all done up so this is the microphone end so let's just screw the microphone on so this just screws on to this end. You'd probably screw the shock mount on first without the microphone and then put the microphone in the shock mount. That would be the better way to do it, but I haven't done it that way. Remember to make sure the Malno name is facing you. That's the front of the microphone. Now, it didn't before when I took it out, but now it's on this stand. The microphone's actually quite small, but I quite like that. I like the fact that it's quite small. The stand's quite nice. The springs are a bit annoying, but you know, this is a 65 pound microphone with a boom stand included, shock mount, pop shield, and an XLR cable. So I think we can forgive a bit of an annoying spring. If you are moving this mid recording, then you might get a little bit of a spring in the recording. Most of the time, you'll set it and leave it, so. Let's plug it in and see what it sounds like. I'm gonna use the XLR cable that came with a microphone. So plug that into this end. I've got my audio interface here that I'm gonna plug into. And that's gonna feed straight into my computer. And in this case, I'm gonna record straight into Premiere Pro. So I've actually done a video here on how to record directly into Premiere Pro. So if you wanna know how to do that, then check that video out for sure. Okay, so we are now listening to the Malno condenser microphone. So this is what it sounds like. Nice. Um, really impressed with the sound. Uh, it's got a really nice, rich sound to it. Picking up a lot of the bass from my voice. Also, a lot of clarity in my voice. Yeah, really nice sounding microphone. At the moment, obviously the pop shield is covering most of my face, so that might be a good thing. But in terms of podcasts, things like that, you generally want to see the people that are talking. So what you can do, which is probably a better option, is if we just turn this so that the mic's point in sort of this way, and then move the pop shield. And then we can just have the microphone off to the side and you can still see the person that's talking, but you're still getting the crisp, clear audio. OK, so you can position the mic so that you can still get the quality of the audio and see the person that's talking. You just need to do a bit of adjusting here and there. So that's what it sounds like close up. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to say nothing and you'll be able to hear what the noise floor sounds like. It's pretty good. I mean, you are picking up the sound of the fan from my PC, but any condensed microphone would pick that up. If you wanted to avoid that sort of sound, you'd need to use a dynamic microphone, but they don't usually sound quite as rich as condenser microphones and you have to be sitting right next to them. So condenser microphones are the norm for this sort of thing, podcasts and that sort of thing. The noise really isn't that bad. With a bit of EQ, you get rid of that anyway. So not concerned about that at all. Really impressed with the audio quality. It's about two foot away. You can hear you're starting to get the sound of the room. That's pretty standard with a condenser microphone. And this is about five foot away. And again, you're getting the room in all sorts now. So if you're using this for a podcast or tutorials, vlogs, that sort of thing, you're going to be sitting pretty close to it. 
this far away at the most probably so it's a good sounding microphone i'm just going to speak into the back and sides so i can show you what the reflection's like so this is the back and as you can hear it's reflecting that quite nicely and the sides starting to go across the front but not too bad and this is the other side again starting to go across the front and that's what it sounds like from the top but a bit of it is coming down the front and this is the front of the microphone so as you can see it's reflected all around apart from the front of the microphone which is picking up the audio so i'm going to switch from this back to my lapel mic to finish the video and you're going to notice a distinctive change in the audio quality so let's do that now okay so we are back to the audio on my lapel mic so as you can see it's not quite the same audio quality as the condenser mic so in conclusion what do i think of the malno aupm 320s bit of a mouthful the name but apart from that what do i think of the microphone uh, really impressed really small form which i like um i was quite surprised by how small it was i like the boom stand i know it's a bit squeaky and stuff but you know that's just the springs but the actual stand itself is really sturdy i like it i think it's a good quality build springs are a bit annoying but springs are going to make noise and unless you're paying big money for boom stands then they're going to have springs attached and it's going to make noise so for the cost i think it's a nice little boom stand really nice build everything's metal apart from these plastic knobs but the clamp's really nice keeps it really tight in place pop shield's really nice double-sided pop shield and then you've got the cover as well so if you wanted to cut out your plosives even more stick the cover on it and you've got the full works. I like it. A lot of the microphones I've reviewed previously have been USB microphones, which are great. But if you're going to be recording multiple audio sources, so a podcast, maybe where you've got two or three people speaking, then using XLRs into an audio interface is probably a better way to go. Uh, you can have multiple audio sources all plugged in via the audio interface, all recorded into your software. You do need to get an audio interface to bridge the gap between the microphone and the PC or Mac, but they're reasonably priced, a couple of hundred pounds, probably similar in the US dollars, and you can get sort of eight inputs. So if you're making music as well, you can use this. So definitely worth thinking about going down the XLR route if you're going to be using multiple inputs. If you're just using it for yourself, then you can still get smaller interfaces. It just has one input if you want to use an XLR condenser microphone, or the USB microphones work just as well. So it depends on what you really want it for. As an entry level sort of condenser microphone with all this gear attached to it, I think this is a really good option, I generally do. Um, really impressed with the build quality, it's all metal. This sounds great. I thought the sound quality on it was really good. Um, don't really need to do a lot of EQ into that to get a good sounding audio. Nice and clear. All in all, a really nice product. If you're, if you're starting a podcast, there's two or three of you doing a podcast or whatever, then I think these microphones will be a really good option for you. Get yourself an audio interface, three microphones or whatever. You can all sit around a table, get nice sounding audio. What you might need to invest in is some longer XLR cables. That's one thing that was a bit annoying is the XLR cables a bit short, but it's not short, short, but it could do with being a little bit longer. But again, everything in the bundle for 65 pounds you can't really go wrong with this. So I hope you found this useful. If you have, please do give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out in growing the channel. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you've used this microphone or if you have any questions. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so I can let you know when new content is released. Releasing content on a Monday and Thursday at the moment, gear tech tutorials, reviews, all that sort of thing. Got some nice little playlists put together for you now so it's easier to navigate. So it'd be great to have some new faces on board for sure. That's it for this one. Thanks Malno for sending the microphone to review. I'll link it all in the description below. That's it for this one. I'll catch you in the next one.